Hey everybody, Call here as always in my Calder Music Workshop and this is the third video documenting the restoration of my beautiful old uh, deluxe series Fender Jazz Bass. I've been playing this thing for over 20 years and the frets have been worn down to the point where it's basically unplayable at a professional level and so I'm going to show you guys how you can re-level your frets on your own. Uh, before we get rolling, I want to give a shout out to uh, all my new subscribers and everyone who's been commenting on my previous videos. In particular, I want to say what's up to Everyone Hates Me VR who uh, suggested I try using a 16 or 18 gauge stranded cable as a Whamola string as opposed to the very expensive upright bass strings that you typically use and that I've been using. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna try that out, man. I appreciate it. Like I said today, we are going to be re-leveling frets. And before we even get started talking about it, if this isn't the kind of thing that you feel entirely confident doing yourself, just don't. Take it to a professional luthier, uh, especially if you've got a really nice, you know, expensive uh, instrument you're trying to work on. So yeah, disclaimers aside, uh, let's dive right in. Bear in mind that if you're not already set up with a shop and, you know, some fairly basic supplies, this is still going to cost you anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks in supplies. So keep that in mind while deciding whether or not you want to take it to a professional. What you're going to need is uh, assorted screwdrivers, Sharpie, assorted sandpaper ranging from about 100 at least up to 600, the right size hex key, uh, Allen wrench to uh, adjust your truss rod, fine flat uh, metal file, masking tape, two-sided mounting tape, a block of wood, uh, nice dense hardwood like this walnut here, about an inch wide, about a foot long, with a perfectly, and I mean perfectly, flat uh, surface. If there's anything I'm forgetting, well, that'll come up soon enough. You can see over here, I've already taken the neck off of my jazz base. To do that, you'll usually just need a Phillips screwdriver, and you just remove the four screws, the mounting plate, and that should pop off pretty easily. You can see the grooves and the frets where my strings have worn down little divots uh, over the years. These are significantly worn down. I'm gonna have to take a lot of material off this instrument. Hopefully it all works out. The good news is I have options. This is a project on the side I've got going on. This is an epoxy pour base. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up keeping for myself. This would become my fretted base. And my next video would be me ripping out these frets and converting my old jazz base into a fretless. So yeah, let's dive in and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so your first step is going to be to clean your fingerboard. Uh, if you need some tips on doing that, uh, my previous video uh, in the beginning parts of the restoration process, I go over that. So the next step is to adjust your truss rod so that your neck is perfectly straight. Um, assuming your neck is perfectly straight while it's mounted and under tension on your instrument, uh, it's going to have a back bow. As tension is released, your headstock is going to pull backward, and so adjusting your truss rod, righty tighty lefty loosey. So what I'm going to want to do is turn my truss rod counterclockwise, uh, releasing tension, and make sure we have a perfectly, and again, perfectly flat surface uh, to work on. After we do that, we're going to attach our sandpaper to our block using our double-sided mounting tape.
I've got a masking tape on to protect the fingerboard. Uh, I've trimmed down my wood block to be the same length as our sandpaper, just to be OCD about it. And the next step is we're going to uh, take our Sharpie and we're going to mark the top of each fret. Uh, after we do that, we're going to take our block and very, very gently and carefully go the full length back and forth, nice and carefully, over the whole length of the fingerboard, being very, very careful not to bump into the nut right there. That will break if you hit it too hard. Uh, and then we're going to keep doing that until all the Sharpie is gone, at which point we'll know that we're pretty close. And then we'll take some measurements, check it, and uh, do the fine details. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, as you can see, Sharpie's all gone. Nice and even. That's our first pass with the more aggressive 100 grit sandpaper. Uh, it takes a lot of material off. You want to be careful with that. So, uh, I'm not sure if my camera's picking it up or not, but the tops of the frets are pretty flat now. And you don't want that. Uh, you want the string to be hitting exactly in the middle of the fret, not on the front or back. We're going to take our file and reshape these frets uh, very, very carefully um, to be a nice, uh, have a nice curved top on them. Uh, for right now, uh, we're going to remark these with Sharpie, do another pass with some uh, uh, finer grit sandpaper, file them down, go from there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've, I've worked my way down to the 600 grit sandpaper. First of all, you're not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. You're, you're just gliding the block across the frets. You're not pressing real hard. Also, there is a subtle curve to the neck, so you want to allow the, the block to sort of, you know, do what it wants to do as it, uh, as it rides back and forth across the fingerboard. Uh, you don't do one section at a time. Always the full length, nice long even strokes. If you're frets are in as poor shape as mine were, you should definitely expect to go through quite a bit of sandpaper. Um, you know, expect to change out this little strip at least a dozen times. Uh, more, less, depending on your needs. Once you get to the 600, you're really just polishing. And what I also like to do at this point is, since you've been lowering the frets, you're going to end up with some kind of sharp edges over here. And I just take my block and really lightly go at an angle like this, rotate sort of like that as you go back and forth. Don't take too much off. Just take that edge off it, just like that. Super easy. Once you get it all polished uh, and there's no more visible scratches, you run your finger across it like this, it feels nice and smooth. Then the next step is a bit more difficult. We're gonna take our flat file and very, very carefully, uh, we're going to put a bevel on each fret. When you're doing this, you want to be really careful not to dig through your tape because obviously you're going to mess up your, your fingerboard. In the end, we want our, our curve, our ridge, to be right exactly down the middle of each fret. And then when we're done with that, we're going to polish the whole thing with sandpaper and finalize it all with steel wool. All right. doing here is using my using the side of my finger as a, a guide so I can feel where I'm at 
and then I just sort of rock this back and forth slightly as I try to keep nice full strokes going across the fret twist this back and forth slightly don't ever don't ever let it be uh, horizontal you know just gently shape that shape that side a little bit I'm just doing one side at a time and then once I'm done with that I'll flip this around so I keep keep the same uh, angle here to the opposite side and I've I've said it before but it bears repeating uh, just like with woodworking you can always take more material off but once you take too much you can never put it back on so don't get crazy with this stuff take your time put on some music yeah it's the greatest tool but the end of a romance we once knew romantic childhood Next step, we're going to take some of our 220 and we're just going to basically do the same thing we just did. Uh, get rid of all the little burrs left over from, from filing. And there shouldn't be that much. In fact, it's good to just kind of do a finger test. Check each fret like this. If you feel anything, you know, file it down. It should be pretty smooth at this point. You can see there's plenty of scratches in it. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing now. We're going to take our 220. Uh, again, we're not doing the top right now. Nothing on the top. We're just trying to buff out the sides of each fret really carefully and methodically, taking our time with it. And uh, we're going to work our way 220, 320, 600. And then our final step is polishing with steel wool, quadruple zero. All right, let's do it. doing one more very very light uh, very light once over on the top of the fingerboard here just to get rid of all the last of the scratches make sure everything is still nice and even nothing should have changed because of course we've been very careful not to touch the top of the frets and uh, we've just been using the more fine sandpaper for polishing so One more quick once over with 600 grit sandpaper and then moving on to the steel wool to polish the whole thing. Very, very lightly, no pressure here, just kind of gliding it back and forth. I think this is gonna turn out pretty good. There we go. Real nice. Hell of a lot better than it was. A thousand times better than it was before. Can't wait to put this back on the base and try it out. Now, of course, you're going to get better results than this if you got all the right tools, but those tools are going to cost you more than a new neck, definitely more than a trip to your local luthier, and a hell of a lot more than 50 bucks at the local hardware store. So anyway, let's strap this thing back on my base and see how it sounds.
Alright, so as expected, the action is now way too high at the nut. So uh, I'm going to go string by string and file that down. Uh, since this is kind of a do-it-yourself video, I'm going to use this uh, cheap tapered round file. You can get one of these at pretty much any hardware store. I got this just down the road at the Do It Best place. Um, and uh, so yeah, go string by string, get the action back down to where we want it. Woo! Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's like a brand new fingerboard. I love it. So, uh, okay, yeah, you know, uh, the big problem was down in the lower positions. So, you know, uh, now it grooves down there just fine. And of course, after re-leveling everything, I was able to lower the action uh, considerably back down to where I like it. Um, makes the higher ranges a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, um, then of course, uh, all the binkity bonkity bullshit. So anyway, yeah, um, hope this video was helpful uh, in figuring out uh, if you want to try this yourself or not. Um, again, I uh, can't stress enough that if you're at all hesitant about going about this on your own, just take it to a professional, have them do it. But, um, you know, if you're fairly handy and, and have been playing for a while and kind of know what you're doing, Hey, you can save yourself a couple of bucks this way. Um, at least get it close enough. If I wanted to be really picky about it, I might go back and round off the frets a little bit more. Um, that's of course why you know we have the specialized tools for it. But again, after 20 plus years of playing on this thing, it was pretty beat up and it's just a world of difference. It is like a brand new neck. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, thanks again for watching and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.